Hello YouTube and welcome back to part 7 of this series on how to use the CRP5. Today we're going to be looking at Mac number, true airspeed and the local speed of sound. And we're going to be looking at how to use both an equation and also how to use the CRP5 to calculate what your Mach number is if you know the local speed of sound and you know the true airspeed also we can work out what the true airspeed is if we know the, the local speed of sound and if we know what the Mach number is but before we get on to that let's quickly first of all define what do we mean by Mach number, true airspeed and local speed of sound well let's look at true airspeed first because we've already covered that in the last two videos the true airspeed is your speed relative to a parcel of air in which you are travelling if you haven't seen part 5, I'd recommend you go back and just watch that where I talk about the definitions of what a true airspeed actually is. Your Mach number is your speed relative to that of sound. So if you're travelling at the speed of sound, you're travelling at Mach 1. If you're travelling at twice the speed of sound, you're travelling at Mach 2. Likewise, if you're travelling at half the speed of sound, then you're travelling at Mach 0.5. Your local speed of sound is the speed in any unit but we're obviously going to be using knots for this the speed in knots at which sound waves propagate now sound waves obviously are just pressure waves that propagate through a medium in our case it's going to be air and the only thing that that varies which kind of determines what the speed of sound is in a medium is the temperature of that medium in this case we're talking about air so we're talking about the temperature of the air and interestingly enough the temperature of the air is the only thing that dictates the speed of sound nothing else um, some people say it's pressure but pressure is dependent upon um, temperature and uh, density is also dependent upon pressure which is dependent upon temperature so although the speed of sound does change with altitude it's not the altitude which causes the change in the speed of sound it's the temperature now there's an equation you can use to calculate what the local speed of sound is and I'll quickly mention that now although we'll try not to use it for the rest of the video because this is all about the CRP5 the equation to calculate the local speed of sound is 38.94 which is a constant times the square root of the absolute temperature so in other words you have to take the temperature of the air in degrees Celsius then you have to add on 273 degrees because that's the conversion between degrees Celsius and degrees Kelvin you now have an absolute temperature so you have the temperature of the air in degrees Kelvin if you take the square root of that then multiply that by 38.94 that will give you the speed of sound in knots if you wish to use another unit like meters per second you can actually convert you can change the the 38.94 to 20.01 if you wish H how is this useful to us how can we work out Mach numbers and true air speeds with this well what we can do is use another equation on paper and the other equation tells us that the Mach number is equal to the true air speed divided by the local speed of sound because if you think about it if I want to know how fast I'm going relative to the speed of sound I simply want to know what my speed is and what the speed of sound is I divide one by the other and that gives me uh, an indication of how fast I'm traveling relative to the speed of sound so for example if the speed of sound was 600 knots and I'm traveling at 600 knots then I've got 600 divided by 600 which is 1 so my Mach number is 1 which means I am traveling at the speed of sound now the CRP5 how can we use the CRP5 to calculate Mach numbers true air speeds and the local speed of sound well as I said the speed of sound is determined only by the temperature of the air and conveniently there's a small mark on your CRP5 that you may not have seen that actually helps you calculate your Mach number very very easily it's called the Mach number index and you'll find it underneath the airspeed window and it's hidden in the airspeed window at the top here if you've got the CRP5 normalized so we've got kilometers meters and liters at the top if you turn this around you'll see magically this appears Mach number index and all you have to do to work out what your uh, your Mach number is or your local speed of sound is to line up this arrow with the given temperature in degrees Celsius you don't have to convert it to Kelvin the CRP5 does that all for you and then you use your big red arrow here which says Mach number next to it 
and this will point to where Mach 1 is. So let me give you a few examples. Minus 35 degrees, what is the local speed of sound? Well let's line this up with minus 35 degrees, with our Mach number index with minus 35 there, and if we look for our big red arrow it tells us that the speed of sound is currently 600 knots. Okay, nice and simple. How about um, the temperature in an icer atmosphere at the top of the tropopause, which is minus 56.5 degrees? So if I line up minus 56.5 degrees there, I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see it slightly better. Minus 56.5. Oh, there we go. Then again, where's the red arrow pointing? The red arrow pointing to about 560, 70, 572 knots, something like that. Okay? Now let's go the other way. Let's go to a high temperature. Let's go to a high temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. So if the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, we line up 30 degrees with our Mach number index arrow, and we look for our big red arrow, and it tells us that at 30 degrees, the speed of sound is 650, 60, 75 knots. 675 knots. Now you'll notice that the warmer the temperature, the higher the speed of sound. And that's because, as we said, the speed of sound is only determined based upon the temperature. And that's because warmer air is less dense. If the air is less dense, then the molecules are further apart, which means you need to travel faster for air molecules to propagate um, a pressure wave. So you need to travel faster in warmer air to meet the speed of sound because the air waves are that much further apart. Whereas when the air is much colder, the air is much more dense and therefore the molecules are much more closer together and therefore it's much easier to reach the speed of sound. You don't have to travel as fast. So the speed of sound goes up as the temperature increases and the speed of sound goes down as the temperature decreases. So now that we've used the Mach number index to calculate what the local speed of sound is using the big red arrow. How can, you, how can we use this to work out our true airspeed? Um, well, it's very simple. Let's say that it's minus 35 degrees and we have a true airspeed of 480 knots. So, minus 35 degrees. There's uh, minus 40, there's minus 35, minus 35 on the Mach number index. Now this tells us that the speed of sound at minus 35 is 600 knots, as we saw from earlier. But if I know that my true airspeed, for example, is 480 knots, what is my Mach number? Well, I simply look on the outer scale for 480 knots, which is there, and that tells me that my Mach number, I've got my true airspeed on the outer scale, I've got my Mach number on the inner scale, and this tells me that where this is 1, this is obviously 0 0.9, and this is 0 0.8. So at 480 knots, with a temperature of minus 35 degrees, my Mach number is 0 0.8. How about another one? If it's plus 30, let's go to the other extreme, so it's plus 30 degrees now. Plus 30 degrees, and let's pick exactly the same speed, 480 knots, true air speed, so 460, 70, 80, and you'll see again, that our Mach number is now 0.71. Okay, there's 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So you can see that by changing the temperature by 60 degrees, our Mach number has changed from about 0 0.7 to 0 0.8. So that's a whole tenth of a, of a Mach, if you will. What about if I tell you the temperature and the Mach number and ask you to work out what the true airspeed is? It's exactly the same. We set up the minus 20 against the Mach number index. And again, incidentally, if we care, that tells us that the local speed of sound is 620 knots. But if I know I'm traveling at Mach 0 0.85, I line this up with Mach 0 0.85 on the inner scale, and then it tells me that my true airspeed on the outer scale is 510.25. So my true airspeed is 525 knots with a Mach of 0 0.85 and a temperature of minus 20. Now one thing I'd like to point out quickly here is that unlike the previous video, part 6, where we talked about compressibility correction, you don't need to take into account compressibility correction when dealing with Mach numbers. The CRP5 is already 
sorted out to take that into account. So if you get um, a true airspeed of over 300 knots, don't worry about trying to take into account compressibility correction. There's no need to do that. Okay. And the last thing I want to talk about is um, we've worked out the Mach number if we know the true airspeed. We've worked out the true airspeed if we know the Mach number. Well, can we possibly work out the temperature if we know the local speed of sound um, on its own? Well, yeah, of course we can. If I tell you that the local speed of sound is 620 knots, what's the temperature? Well, I can set up my big red arrow to 620 knots, which it happens to be set to now. 620 knots, and if I want to know what the temperature is, I just look to see where the Mach number index is pointing, which is minus 20. So let's say that the speed of sound was uh, 570 knots. So let's move this to 550, 60, 70. What's the temperature? The temperature is minus 58, minus 59 degrees. Okay, it's really that simple. I think I've covered everything. Any questions, any issues, put them in the comments, ask, and I'll see you for part eight shortly. Thanks very much.